Welcome back. I'm glad you could join me today. And today I thought we'd do the little painting that's animated at the beginning of each show. And you've been watching that one every week, and it's a fantastic little painting. I think you'll enjoy doing it. Now, we won't be able to do an exact duplicate because we never duplicate anything exactly. But I'll show you each stroke and how it was done. And from there, you can get the idea yourself and, and make fantastic paintings at home. And I'll have them graphically run all the colors that we're going to use across the screen. And they'll give you the colors in the order that I have them on my palette, starting with titanium white and going around. All right, now I've already covered the canvas with a thin, even coat of magic white. So it's wet, slick, ready to go. And let's get started. We'll start out right here with a, with a small amount of Indian yellow. Indian yellow is a, is a very, very transparent yellow. A lot of fun to work with. Let's go right up here. And we'll start using just the little crisscross strokes. Just X's. <laughs> this is the way the teacher used to grade my paper in school. A lot of X's. There we go. Now it's mixing with the magic white and automatically it gets lighter in value. There. Just small yellow hue in, this, in the background. Very little of this will show. Okay, now let's go right back without cleaning the brush and I'm gonna get a, a very small amount of alizarin crimson and just beat it into the brush. This is sure is a nice even distribution of color in the brush so you don't end up with great big streaks in the sky. And once again, the little crisscross little X patterns right on top of the yellow. And it's very, very easy to apply more color, but it's a son of a gun to take it off. So use very, very little color. You can always add more if you want it. There, all the way across. And blend these together. Just keep making the little, little crisscross strokes so they blend together. And you can't tell where one color stops and the other one starts. That's what we're looking for. Now, the, the crimson acts as a barrier because I'm gonna put blue on the top. And the crimson acts as a barrier in between here to keep the yellow and the blue from mixing because if those two mixed, you'd have a bright green sky and we don't want that. So, I'm going right into a little bit of the phthalo blue. Tiny, tiny amount. Blue is so strong. Go right up here and we make the little crisscross strokes allowing the blue to blend right into the alizarin crimson. And where they meet, it'll turn sort of a lavender color, purplish color. And this is a very soft painting. A lot of the paintings we've done in the past have been very bright. And I wanna show you that, that you can do very, very soft, quiet little paintings. So they don't have to be bright. Some people object to bright colors, so. This piece of canvas is your world, and you can do anything you want to do. We just try to show you how, give you ideas. There we go. Now, just blend all this together, still using a little crisscross strokes. And because we're using a very thick paint, you can do all this blending without it turning to mud. Okay, now, while I've got my brush going here, I want to take a little more of the crimson and just Go back and forth and add a little bit down here. Just here and there. Just back and forth, have fun. Let it go, a little more crimson on the brush. There. And right into a little bit of the phthalo blue. And very lightly here and there. Just, we'll pick up some of this and we start laying snow in here and it'll become shadows. Just lay it in. Now we can clean our brush. The brushes are cleaned with odorless paint thinner. Bloop, just got the cameraman over there and he's gonna yell at me in a second. Okay, now we can just blend this out a little bit. As I say, this will end up being shadows under the snow, so we're really not too worried about it right now. It's just, it's just background color. Just background color. Okay, now let's have some little trees that are, that are far back here in the distance, and we'll make them a little different way than we've been making them. I'm gonna go right into a little bit of the Van Dyke Brown, very little color, small, small amount of color, and tiniest amount of the burn umber. And Mix them on the brush, brush mix. But there's very little paint on the brush. 
just back and forth. Now let's go right up in here, and maybe you gotta you gotta make almighty decisions. Maybe there's a little tree that lives right here. So we just take the large brush, and we're just using the corner, and we're just tapping. See, see how that's doing? There, a little more color. Very, very little color on your brush. Maybe, maybe there's a big tree that lives right here. And as I say, this will not be an exact duplicate of the one that you see at the beginning of the show, but it'll give you an idea and show you how it was made. And I wish you could come into, into the studio here and watch. It only takes a few minutes to, to paint that beautiful little painting, but a lot of time is spent animating it, and they do a fantastic job here. I hope you enjoy the little animated paintings that are at the beginning of each show. I find them very interesting, and I hope you do. A little bit darker color right here at the horizon. A little lighter up in the sky and darker at the horizon. That way it'll help create the illusion of distance. And don't let your trees get too symmetrical, too, too even. Let them, let them just go. Let them go. Just looking for very distant, basic shapes, very soft. Let a little of that yellow show through. You don't want to kill all of that. That's all these little things make it interesting. See how simple that is? And I was a traditional painter for many years, and I would have worked for days with my one-haired brush, putting all that in. And you could achieve a very gentle, soft effect using a large brush. Still just using Van Dyke Brown, a little touch of burn number. There we go. Decide where your horizon is going to be and just brush it out. Now then, I'm going to take my liner brush and put a little bit of thin oil on it and go right into my brown. Turn the brush, bring it to a nice sharp point, turn it. Now, let's go right up in here, and we just want to put some little indications here and there of some little trunks and limbs. Don't want them to be too bright, too strong. These are just indications, just here and there. Just let them go. One of the questions I hear quite frequently, should I pull down or should I go up? It's sort of an individual thing. It will work either way. Let's, let's take one right here. And we'll take this one and go up. Now, some people will find it easier to, to go to the small end. Some find it easier to start at the small end and go toward the large end. So try them both. Find out which one works the best for you. And that's the one that you want to use. There we go. Maybe there's one that lives right here. And all of them aren't straight. Some of them are crooked. Trees don't all grow straight. They grow however makes them happy. And that gives us an idea of just little tree branches here and there in trunks. Now, with a large brush, I'm going to take a tiny, tiny little bit of the yellow, back to the Indian yellow, and just touch a little bit here and there, just to give a little highlight indication, and go over the trunks, because you wouldn't see the entire trunk. You just see parts of it. Tiniest, tiniest little bit of the Indian yellow. Just let a little light play through these trees. Very soft. Don't want to lose that softness. Very, very soft. Quiet. And this little painting should make you happy. All paintings should make you happy. That's what painting's all about. Okay, now I'm going to take a little more. And maybe, I think, I think there was a little tree that lived right here. It's a little closer, so it's a little bit stronger. By stronger, I mean it's a little darker. You can see it a little better. There we go. And put some little branches here and there. Now, this is winter, so the leaves have fallen off most of the trees. And wherever you want these to be, drop them in. It's your world. 
You know, and I've said it before, but if, if painting teaches you nothing else, it teaches you to see. It teaches you to see some of the most fantastic things that are around us, and every day we, we walk by them and we never look at them. And painting will teach you to see these things. If it's good for nothing else, it really makes you appreciate nature and some of the fantastic, beautiful things that are all around us. I'm gonna take a little tiny bit of the Van Dyke Brown and just barely touch. See, it makes it look like hundreds of little tiny limbs that we don't have all day to paint. We just drop them in, just to give indications. Now then, let's go, let's go with the old fan brush, and I'm gonna start with titanium white. Put some on the brush, and we have to make an almighty decision here. Where's, where's our horizon line? Okay, maybe it comes right down through here and drops off right down in here. And very gently, very, very gently. Now we take a little bit of phthalo blue and our brush mix a great deal. Mix things on the brush. We need some shadows here and there. We can even add a tiny bit of brown to that just to dull it back in here. Maybe this comes right on up. Goes right up, right up through there, wherever you want it to go. It's your world. Let these things just flow right out of your imagination. Do you see how easy it is to make snow? But angles are very, very important. I can't stress that enough. You need to follow the angles, the lay of the land. I know I say that on just about every show, but it is very, very important. Very important that you follow the lay of the land. And we put a shadow in here. Maybe we want to have a, a little projection right there. Put a shadow in, and we make that, that's thalo blue, titanium white, and blend it all together wherever you want it to go. Now, very gently, right over the top, we'll add a little bit of white so that it has a little contrast. And it's that easy. That easy. And you can make all kind of beautiful little snow banks and let all these little things just happen. It's just a game of angles. Just back and forth. Maybe I'll put the least little amount of crimson on my brush just to Put a little pinkish hue into here, which when we add the blue, it's gonna go sort of lavender. Be very, very pretty. Makes nice shadows. And if you're if you're interested in selling paintings, of course, none of us are interested in monetary gains. But if you're ever interested in selling paintings, a lot of times color is as important as your composition. People buy paintings for color. So use colors that appeal to people if you're interested in selling paintings. And when you buy your first tube of paint, you're issued an artist's license, and artist's license says you can do anything that you want to do on this canvas because it's, it's your world. So use that license. Have fun with it. That's what it's all about. Okay. Now maybe, 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 we'll have a tiny little bit of water. And water is very easy to make when we're working on a wet canvas. I'm gonna take a tiny bit of the Van Dyke Brown and the least little amount of Thalo Blue. So I have Van Dyke Brown and Thalo Blue. And once again, I've just brush mixed it. But very little color, very, very little color. And figure out where you want the water to be here. And you touch and just pull down. Pull down, let it go, wherever you want it to be. Wherever, there. And you pull it straight down, no matter where it goes, it still needs to come straight down. Just like so. There, now very lightly, very lightly, go across. And that easy, that easy. It gives the illusion of water. Okay. Now maybe 
right along the edges here. This is just straight Van Dyke brown. I'm gonna lay in just a little bit of dirt to show him. Tiniest little bit of dirt. In some places, maybe a little more shows. And this is your dirt, so you put it where you want it. Wherever. Then back to our titanium white. And we can bring some of the snow right down over the top of it and blend it all together. Just blend it together. There. Isn't that a super easy little way to make fantastic, fantastic snow? It's that easy. Now, I'm gonna take a little bit of the magic white, pull it out very, very flat, and cut across it. And we'll put a little water line right back here. And we're cutting into the canvas. Act just like you're trying to cut a hole. Right into the canvas. There. And if you get one that's got too much paint on it, all you gotta do is take a clean knife and rub it, and it'll go away. Just blends right in. No problem. Just let it go. There. Okay, now we gotta start making some almighty decisions. What's on the other side here? Now, if I remember correctly, on the other side, we have something that lives right about here and comes down there, something like so. And we'll just lay in some color. I'll take a little bit of the white, go back, and highlight it a little. Once again, once again, follow the lay of the land. It's very, very important. You have to make these almighty decisions. Okay, now maybe under this one, back to our brown, and lay in a little bit of brown so it's the bottom. And do this in stages here, because we're going to have things that are overlapping. Barely, barely touching. There we go. Now, a little of the magic white. And we can put in a little water line right there. Now, back to our Van Dyke Brown. Maybe right there, right there. It's a big old, big old stone showing. There it is. And we want some snow coming down here and going right over the top. That easy. Now this brown's a very firm paint, so you can go right over the top of it without destroying everything. If it was a thin paint, <laughs> You'd be a mud mixer now. So, you need a good firm paint. It's the only way you're going to make all this stick. There. Okay. Now then, I think in the one that at the beginning of the show, there's some big evergreens that live right here. So let's do a big evergreen. And I'm going to take some phthalo blue. We just use the brush, Van Dyke Brown, and a little bit of sap green. Just a little sap green, because the, the green is a very dangerous color in this painting. If you get it in your snow, you know what happens. You got green snow. So very little green, mostly blue and brown. Very dark contrast. And let's go right there, right there. Big tree lives right there. I use the corner of the brush and just sort of go back and forth. There we go. And that's how easy a tree is to make. Just push them right out of your brush. See, a little bit of sap green gives it a, will give it a greenish hue without it being a bright green. And you'll see it especially when I hit the white down here. There we go. See, that gives it a greenish hue, but it's not a bright green. Now, you know, 
trees get lonely too, so let's give him a little friend that lives right there. Now that you know how to make trees, shoot, you get carried away sometime and can't stop. Let me just put a couple of trees in here. It's just, just to show you how to make a little tree, a happy little tree. Okay, now we can take here and I'll use a little bit of the Indian yellow. Indian yellow and the tiniest little touch of phthalo blue. And some brown into it. We want to dull it down there. Don't want this too bright. Some brown there. So we've got Van Dyke brown. A little touch of phthalo blue and Indian yellow. And we can come back here and highlight this tree. Just a little bit here and there. Don't want it to get too bright. Don't want to lose this beautiful darkness. You'll lose the contrast. Don't want to lose our contrast. And this little fella here needs some highlights on him too. So just let him drop right off your brush. Okay, now let's use the, the one inch brush and I'm gonna go right into the burr number and just drop some happy little bushes right here. Just like so. And we'll use another brush and to that I'm gonna use white. This is titanium white and a least little touch of phthalo blue a little bit of magic white to thin the paint. There. Thin paint will stick to a thick paint. Okay, pull that brush in one direction, a lot of paint on the brush. Touch and push and bend it up and make some beautiful little frosty leaves on top of these. You don't want to kill all that dark. Maybe they come right down through there. Okay. Now then, let's put another little bank right there. And it doesn't matter if you pick up a little bit of that brown. There we go. And we'll take a little bit of the blue for shadow and lay it in there. Super. Now, while I've got that color going, maybe over here, there's a, another one right there. I want to have a tiny, tiny little bit of brown right in there just to make it look like there's another stone. And we'll just bring it right over like that. There. And drop that in. Now let's put some happy little trees in this. And then we'll go right into some Van Dyke brown, pull it out very flat, get a little bit of paint, and maybe, maybe I think there was a I think there was a nice birch tree that lived right there, and he had a friend that lived right there beside him. Just like so. And just with a knife, touch. There we go. Give him some body here on his friend. And on the other side, there was a large birch tree. So we'll drop him in right about here. There he goes, and we just let him go right on off the top of the canvas. And want to make him a little fatter, a little bigger, because he's closer to us. That'll help give the painting depth. Make it look very deep. Just like so. And give him a little foots. Got to have something to stand on. Now, clean the knife, and I'll take a little bit of the titanium white. Touch and pull. Make it look like birch bark. Just like so. All the way up. A little bit more of the white. And we'll touch and pull. There we are. And with our liner brush, right into some brown. This is a thin oil. And very quickly here, we'll just drop in some basic little tree shapes. Little branch shapes, I mean. Just drop them in wherever you want them. 
It's your world, your tree. There we go. I'm going to hope you've enjoyed this painting half as much as we have. It's a lot of fun. Teach you a great deal about how to use the equipment. And I think you'll like it. And as I say, it's a good painting to, to make a happy buck if you're interested. There. And put as many limbs there, as few as you want. Some of them hang down. They're old and tired like me. Don't laugh. You'll get there one day. Okay, now with our big brush, I'm gonna go right into some Van Dyke Brown, a little bit of burn umber, tiniest little bit, and just touch the edges, just once again, to give the indication of a lot of little tiny branches that you can set and paint in, or you can just put in little indications, let them go. And this is basically, basically how we made the little painting at the beginning of the show. Okay, and we'll put in just a little weed here and there. A little bit of the light color, highlight it. And now I'm using just a little burn number, and that's all you have to do, put in some little weeds and sticks. Sort of helps set everything out. And with that, I think we'll call this painting finished. And from all of us here, we'd like to wish you happy painting. God bless. See you next week.